Hi, St. Simons, and for the whole month of September, we're looking at the unchanging cross of Christ. And each of the Sundays, we're taking an aspect of the service, the restricted service that we're allowed at the moment, and studying it in the context of Jesus' cross. Last week, we took the word together because coming back together is real celebration. Those who are able to come back together at 10.30 on a Sunday, we looked at the special spiritual connection we have because of the cross of Jesus. This week, we're looking at Holy Communion. We're going to be taking communion every Sunday at St. Simon's for the time being. And we're looking at that in the context of the unchanging cross of Jesus. In weeks to come, we're going to look at testimony. The original testimony was because of the resurrection of Jesus, something to celebrate. It's a life changer for everyone who encounters it. And we're lastly going to look at the Word of God and how the cross is attested in the Word, how we know that the cross is true and what it means for us. Holy Communion, though, this week, and we're looking at 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I love classical music, and ever since I was a small boy, I've got memories of my parents introducing me to classical music on their little record player, and it's never gone away, that love. I still sing in a couple of different choirs at certain points of the year as a hobby for other parents joining me in the, for a couple of our children's school choirs. One of my favorite pieces of music is the finale from Swan Lake, written by Tchaikovsky. I think many people would say they love the exhilaration of that and how emotive it is. You could almost say you feel like you've seen the whole of Swan Lake, but you can't say that unless you know how Swan Lake starts and where the middle is and how it ends, not just the musical soundtrack for it. How did communion start. We come and we take it at church, but what's the context for it? Well, the context is the Jewish festival of the Passover. Remember, Jesus, the Jew, and his disciples, who were all Jewish, were celebrating Passover together. And then this is what happened. happens. We get this from Matthew chapter 26. It's also recorded in Mark chapter 14 and Luke 22. This is Matthew 26, verse 26. And it says this, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus was identifying himself as the fulfillment of Passover. What is Passover? Well, it comes from an actual meaning of the word pass, to pass over, and it was the story of when the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. The blood of a lamb from each household, a lamb was sacrificed, and each lamb, the blood was shed, and it was painted on the doorpost. That night, the angel of death, which was swooping through Egypt, affected every household with tragedy, including Pharaoh himself, except for those with the blood of the sacrificial lamb, the Jewish people that God was calling out of that place. And that night, Pharaoh, in a state of absolute bereft disarray, said, go, off you go. He even changed his mind and quickly changed, it chased them with his army, but they were already on the way and God organized their safe passage across the Red Sea. That was the exodus to the promised land. But the blood of that little lamb was shed and saved them so that they went, leaving Egypt in chaos. They also ate the lamb 
once the blood had been shed. It was the last meal before they were left in such a rush that they could only have unleavened bread. There was no time for it to rise. Jesus was saying, I am the Passover lamb. He's often referred to. He's referred to in the communion service as the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And we say, have mercy on us, the sacrificial lamb. The origin, the origin of communion is Passover, and I often think that for every, com every time we take communion, we should really do it in the context of Passover. I don't know about the full meal, but at least an understanding of God's salvation history, which starts with that amazing exodus of his people and continues right through to his amazing escape that he organizes for us from sin so that we are judged as totally righteous even though we aren't or weren't until jesus forgave us until we accepted jesus all because of the cross that is the power of communion it's the central asset of everything we have it's quite permissible to get excited about this I'm sorry if lots of people have had an image of the sobriety as being the overarching thing of every Church of England service, especially communion or the Eucharist. It deserves the utmost of reverence. It deserves such respect. That's why people take time over it and are pondering it, are serious, but ultimately it's the greatest party ever that God would look on us as clean and as worthy of relationship with him, meaning we have eternal life starting now. That is what communion is about. And the Church of England is brilliant because it's very good at emphasizing that we come forward and we choose to receive. It's up to us to choose this covenant relationship. The word covenant was mentioned in what Paul wrote in the reading that I did from 1 Corinthians 11. He was writing to try and teach some responsibility to those who are already taking communion, as we now call it, but doing it irresponsibly. They were treating it as a meal. There were even some people in church that were turning up, having this meal, and drinking far too much. And he was needing to exert some leadership. Some ways of the world had really got in and done some dreadful things to their worship together. So he wrote these instructions. But the word covenant also comes up in what Jesus said that I read from Matthew 26. Covenant involves the shedding of blood. And do you see the connection with the lamb whose blood was shed? Way back in the book of Genesis, never mind the book of Exodus about the crossing of the Red Sea, but in Genesis it talks about the blood of a ram being shed in place of the little son of Abraham, Isaac, as God was about to make a covenant with shed blood with Abraham, that he would be the father of the Jewish people, so to speak. And a ram was found at the last minute. There was a covenant made by God at the shedding of that. And now, with Jesus' blood shed, we have what Jesus described as a covenant. We often call it the new covenant. And it also says at the end of the reading, you'll notice the last verse that I read, that as we eat and drink it, we're proclaiming Christ's death until he comes. We're saying that it's in his suffering and his death that we have freedom. It is important that God himself was put to death, God who was perfect on behalf of us, so that when we come forward for communion, it's a somber experience indeed, knowing that every time it's a reminder and a re re receiving by faith to each one of us that he is living inside us. So we come forward and we eat the body of Christ and it becomes the body of Christ as we by faith receive it and we eat it and we also spread it. We take it with us. Christ is living in us, symbolized by the, the taking of communion. And off we go and take it to our homes and take it back to the part of London from which we've come. So we thank God for all that that means, and we do it with great intention at St. Simon's. And we celebrate, we party. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great blessing to us. And we ask 
that you would teach us more about your cross each time we come forward for communion. Help us to remember just what you went through in such an unjust way so that we could be justified before your heavenly Father, our heavenly Father. In your name we pray. Amen.